In fact, more often than not, God will take us out of our comfort zone. Amen. And it is uncomfortable, and sometimes it doesn't always make sense because we invest all our time in doing certain things or going a certain direction, and God says, wait a minute. That, that isn't what I had in mind for you. You're going to have to... You're going to have to do something else. And the direction I thought, myself, I thought that God wanted me to go. God says, no, no, no. I have already, we've already prepared something. And you need to go back to that, whether you're uncomfortable or not. So here we are. Here we are. Mark chapter 14 and verse 1 reads like this. It says, after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread... And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. And they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box. The box was full of ointment of spikenard, very precious, very expensive. There was a great investment that was about to take place. And the Bible says that she broke the box. Something happens when the breaking takes place. She broke the box and, and she poured it on his head. You cannot pour something without having something being broken first. Can't do it. And there was some that had indignation within themselves. Everyone say within themselves. And said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured, Against her. They didn't understand. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? Don't you understand? She has wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor always with you, or with you always. And whatsoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She is come aforehand to anoint my body and to bury, to the burying, I'm sorry. Verily I say unto you, whosoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial. Of her. In other words, people throughout the entire world from that day forward will remember what she's done, her sacrifice, her breaking, the pouring out of what was precious and the investment that she had she was willing to release. And Judas, one of Jesus' followers, one of the 12 that had a relationship with him. He walked with him, but he didn't know him. Sometimes we can walk with the Lord in our flesh and never tap into the spirit, the mind of God. And so our life in God is unfulfilled. We're not happy. We search for other ways to be happy when happiness stands right before you. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the priest to betray him, to betray Jesus unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, and he sought how he might conveniently betray him. For you have the poor always with you, or with you always, and when soever ye will, you may do them good, but me, 
ye have not always. What can we get out of this conversation, this short setting of Scripture? There's so much that I don't think we can exhaust everything that God has. In fact, I know I, I know we can. We talked about this at Purpose Institute yesterday. Now, sometimes we can read something and we can say, I've read that before and there's nothing else more for God to give me, amen. And we're saying that God in all his eternity cannot teach us something more, cannot give us more revelation, cannot enhance our walk. He's given us everything he can in this short setting. But when we look at it from that standpoint, we look, we're looking at the word of God from a, a carnal outlook, a fleshly outlook. We limit God in his capacity to teach us, to guide us, to help us in life. So in saying that, maybe Jesus was saying, there are going to be times, and there will be, when we're going to have less than what we want. And yet many of us spend most of our time trying to make a better living trying to make more money, trying to have better friends. Why? Because we simply want to be accepted. We want people to recognize us because of our financial status, because of our reputation. We work and we work and we work to try to get ahead in life. And it's always going to be there, and yet we can go through life and at the end of our days, when people look at the legacy that we've left, how will they describe your investment? How will they describe what you've left? Maybe Jesus was trying to get others to realize it's not about the temporary, it's all about the eternal values that he has to offer. Maybe Jesus was saying, why not invest in the things that really matter, and that's me. I matter, Jesus was saying. Jesus can give you the things that will last throughout eternity. It's not temporary things that he offers you. Yes, he can give you some things that will help you through life. He can bless you with some things that can help you through life. But Jesus always focuses on the spiritual things in life because he knows that thing, these are things that are going to last. So when you come to the end of your rope, come to the end of your road, you've exhausted your entire life and you're still there in a state of unfulfillment. You turn and you say, what happened? Worked my whole life and it seems like I got holes in my pockets and it seems like everyone that said that they loved me and they would be there for me forever are gone. And there we are by ourselves, isolated. It does happen. Even in the church. And give your whole life to come into church and dedicate your whole life to church and live in a miserable state of carnality. Mark chapter 14 and 8, Jesus said she had done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. There is where Mary stood in that she could only do what she could do. She could not do no more. She could not do no less. Yet Mary was recognized by Jesus because she poured everything she had into the process of Jesus' purpose. And that's where we stand today because Mary is a reflection 
of the church of the living God, the apostolic church that needs to break ourselves. We need to pour everything we have into the purpose of God. Verse 9, Jesus said, Truly, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this act of worship that she had done should be spoken of for a memorial of her. It's, it's more than just talking about doing something. There's an action that must be implied or we, we, should, we should do it. We should follow our faith by our actions. The Bible says works. Faith without works is dead. You see, Jesus, Jesus remembers everything that you do. Nothing goes unnoticed. It doesn't matter what you do, whether it's in secret or whether it's out in the open. Jesus recognizes, he remembers Every single thing you do. Now I could say whether it's the godly or whether it's ungodly. Who are you influencing by your actions? When we come to the end of our days, who's going to be there standing with you? What have you done in this world to influence somebody? to instill eternal values in people, amen. Are your actions going to alter someone's course for the good? We should never worry about being recognized by our peers. Is it wrong for someone to give you props? No, it's not. I'm not teaching about or I'm not teaching against recognition. I'm not doing that. I'm saying, if that's all we're doing it for is recognition, then we need to take a second look at ourselves. You see, there could be problems that can happen when we lift ourselves up. Don't you know what I did, Pastor? Pastor, uh, I, I can even say, God, don't you know what I'm doing? We don't have to go to that extent, and here's why. In verse 10, the Bible says, Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus unto them. You see, Judas wanted to be recognized for betraying Jesus, and that was his reward. That's what he inherited. This is what, how he was recognized by betraying Jesus. In other words, temporary recognition. In other words, worldly recognition is only temporary. When Judas stepped outside of the will of God, self-gratification rose up, pride rose up. It caused him to lose focus. In the purpose of God. And that's what self-gratification does. It causes you to lose focus on the purpose of God. When we invest all our time in temporary stuff, we lose the real purpose of God. No longer are the things of God and of any value. No longer do we become sensitive to the voice of God. No longer is church a priority. It's okay to stay away from church. Most things happen. Hear me now. Most problems happen on Sunday morning. Most problems happen on Tuesday night. These are when things rise up and we hear the excuses all the time. We need to get over those excuses, praise God. We need to fight through those things. This is a fight. This is a war. This is a battle that we fight every single day. And I understand. I understand how the body is, praise God, at least my body. 
And sometimes we can believe in something that probably isn't as bad as we think it is. I got to ask you a question this morning. Did Judas believe in what he was doing? Did Judas really believe in what he was doing? Truth is what you believe in your heart to be right. We all believe somewhere in our life before God found us that we were doing something, at least I did, I can speak for myself. I was a drug addict. I was a pool hustler. But I believed that if I could go out and hustle, pool, and do drugs, and avoid my family, as long as I was providing a living for them, I was doing right. But in that truth that I believed, I was not only deceiving myself, but I was ripping apart everyone that loved me. You see, real truth, biblical truth, never comes from the inside, friend. It always comes from the outside. Whenever you think that you have truth within without God, you are deceiving yourselves. You are believing in something that isn't real, praise God. And there's so many people in our world today that fall under that category. What does Paul say about this in Romans chapter 4 and verse 3? Paul writes, let God be true and every man a liar. Verse 10 says, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Who is he talking about? Me. You. Verse 12, they are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. God is so holy, we cannot live up to his standards. Every one of us have fallen short of the glory of God. That's why we need to depend on God. That's why we need to depend on his word. That's why we need to seek God. That's why we need to be sensitive to the moving of God's spirit, praise God. Because we in ourselves, in our fleshly ways, in the way we think, We don't know how God shifts. We want to do our own thing. That's why we need to be sensitive. So when God moves, we move with him. What a powerful move of God in this place this morning. Someone that comes in, they don't really understand what's going on. It's foreign to them. Just like it was foreign to you. Just like it was foreign to me. Amen. But as you, the closer we get to God and the more sensitive we, we are to God and, and the more that, that we know God and the more that we understand God the best we can, the more we, we, we get the concept of what God's doing. So when God moves, we move. Brother Ricky asked me yesterday, he said, what does it mean to be yoked up with God or, or yoke? And I said, it's basically two oxen that have these wooden things on and, and they move and sink. And if you get out of sync, God will, God will pinch you. God, God will let you know, amen, hey, you're getting ahead of me. Hey, catch up to me. Let's move together. Let's be unified. Yeah, right. amen. And so Mark 14 and verse 11, back to the scripture, when they heard that Judas was going to betray Jesus, the Bible says the enemies of God were glad and promised to give him money. You see, that's what drove Judas. It was was the actions that that caused him, amen, to betray Jesus. The Bible says, so Judas went looking within himself how he might conveniently betray him. When God isn't inside of you, when God isn't living inside of you, when the Spirit of God is not moving you to do certain things, something else will. 
And we need to be careful, friend. The woman in Mark 14 who anoints Jesus with expensive perfume is really unnamed, but we know that it was most likely Mary. The account of this event appears in Mark 14, Matthew 26, and John 12, and it takes place in a place called Bethany. It was here at Bethany where Mary cemented her legacy in that Her action should always remind the people of God, the apostolic church, Holy Ghost filled children of God, what giving of our all should look like. I got to ask you, are you giving your all? If not, why not? What drives you today? What makes you happy? Where do you get your fulfillment in life? Is happiness something that you picture in your mind to be true? Because if it is, the Bible tells me my heart can can deceive me. It can make me believe in something that isn't Real, it can make me believe in something that will alter my course by the decisions I make because I believe that something is real or because this is what I think God wants. Is your life consumed by consistently getting instead of giving? Legacies. Legacies are often left to those who cling to a memory of hope. Legacy is defined in the dictionary as something transmitted by or received from an ancestor or a predecessor from the past. Legacies can also be left to a loved one as a memory, a gift, something that reminds the person of the past. In my opinion, the greatest legacy are investments that we leave for someone else as a a memory or a, a gift. Legacies are shown in various forms. Legacies may be rooted in one's faith, Moral principles, core values. Legacies can stem from one's character or reputation that they built. Legacy often leaves a lasting impact as their life encourages future generations. Talking about legacy, I'm talking about the sacrifice that we need a man to alter, to influence somebody's life. For instance, my mother left me a legacy. What kind of legacy, you might ask? It wasn't a legacy of monetary value, I assure you that. But it was a legacy of memories. It was a legacy of what serving Jesus was all about. I remember my mama used to pray in the room that I was next to and it'd wake me up and I'd get so angry. I'd get angry because I had to go to work in an hour and she woke me up by her praying and I would get so mad. But oh, the legacy that she left me, the understanding of what it takes to sacrifice time, amen, to be inconvenient at times where I could be sleeping. Legacies that were instilled into my heart. Legacies that would cause my mind to alter so I would do things that I typically don't want to do. Anybody that wants to get up in the middle of the night freezing and cold to pray, amen, show me the great joy in that. And it's always hard starting up. It's always hard getting involved, but once you get up and God has spoken to you, you understand. David says, oh, 
It wasn't until I went to the house of God where I understood. And it's only in the presence of God where you really understand who God is and what he's trying to instill in his children. And so my mama, my mama would pray and my mama would, 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 would disciple me at the kitchen table day after day after day and she would encourage me when I didn't want to go to church and she would help me to be strong in the Lord, amen. And she would, she would sometimes uh, chastise me, not physically, but she would, she would tell me the most important things in life are not the things that you earn in this world and not the friends that you accumulate, but it's your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the greatest the greatest legacy, amen, that you can leave your children because those are the ones that are watching you. These are the examples that you leave when you leave this world, amen. Your children got nothing else but the memories of your mother and your father as they remember in their minds of what and how they lived their life. Talking about legacies, friend. I'm talking about sacrificing, amen. Whatever you have, I'm talking about breaking yourself and pouring yourself out at the feet of Jesus. It's the greatest legacy that you could ever, that you could ever invest in. My mama's life touched me. It was on her deathbed where I went to visit her, and she, she says, Mijo, I was praying last night. She probably lived about two days after that, three days after that. She goes, I was praying, and I saw the presence of God, and he came, and he, the glory of God, the glory cloud, it was here, mijo, and God was reassuring me, and he was giving me comfort, and I was thinking, that's awesome, Mom. I'd never witnessed that to this point. And I was thinking, uh, is, it the, is it the drugs? Is it the medication? Or what's, did she really see it? And I, you know, I, 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 I took it all in, and I remember... I remember going outside, amen, and he was either that day or the next day, and my brother, he was out there, and he says, man, Steve, he says, I, it was phenomenal. I was out here, and he says, I saw, I saw the glory cloud over my mom's house, and what my mom saw, my brother saw, and I said, wow, that's powerful. And it was simply because she dedicated her life, she committed her life, she consecrated her life. Was she perfect? No, she was not perfect. She was far from it, and neither are you, amen. But it's the things that you do, amen, that make a difference in people's lives. It's the legacy of your sacrifice. It's the legacy of your investment. My mama died, and I remember some of the kids received things that were of value to them. I didn't receive anything, and it bothered me because I spent most of my time there, and I was at the bed, and I was there. And I just wanted to be with my mom to her last breath. And I remember the boys, Swiss boys were sitting around there and she was, she was laboring. She was, she was, she was dying. And I told my brother, I said, I got to, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I went to the bathroom. I came back and she was gone. I just wanted to be there for her when she was gone, but God would not allow me. I remember about a month later, I was hurt. I was, I was wrestling with God. I was hurt because my mom, it seemed like she just abandoned me, and she, I didn't understand what God was doing. I didn't really understand. I didn't get it. I was, I was walking in the flesh, it seemed. 
And I went to my bishop and I said, Bishop, I said, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to complain, but my mom passed and I was there with her and I was just being selfish. I said, I, I feel like she left everybody everything but me and it seemed like I just spent more time with her and I should have got something. And he, he just looked at me and he says, son, he says, you, I think you're missing it. I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, he goes, what your mother gave to your siblings they would only last for a short time. He says, what she gave you is going to last for eternity. I said, what do you mean? He says, she taught you how to live for God. And you cannot put a price on that. Yes. There's so much value in what your mother did for you. And I went in my place and I repented. And I thanked my mama. Another example is my daddy. I have this Bible here and it was, this is my dad's Bible. And even though it wasn't passed down to me, it was passed down to my brother and my brother gave it to me, but here's the point. When you invest in something of great value, you don't know how many hands it's going to touch. You don't know how many lives it's going to touch. You don't know how many people it will influence. I can remember when my father tried to get me to go to church, and like most kids, I ran. I would not listen to him. And even though my father never saw his prayers answered, he never saw the fulfillment of his prayers come to fruition, my father never lived to see what became of us boys. And even though all those three things are true, it never stopped him from serving God. Because it was the influence that he left. It was the legacy that he left that caused us to reflect back and remember that it didn't matter. He was not going to shift from the direction that God had him go. And this world needs a strong church. This world needs a church that is not going to be swayed by the world's ideas. Amen. Yes, amen. The scripture was read this morning. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't let the world Conform your mind. Don't let the world transform your mind. Allow God's word to transform your mind. My daddy never, never lived to see what became of us. But it never stopped him from hope. A hope that one day we would eventually see what he saw. I got a final question for you. Brother Godfrey, you can come up. What are we leaving? What kind of legacy are we leaving for the future generation? How are your children, how are your friends, how are your enemies going to remember you? They're going to remember you as someone that dedicated your life to God, that invested things of great value, your time, your money, into the purpose of God? Are they going to remember you when you invested your time and your money into the purpose of the world? 
How are your loved ones going to remember you? What kind of legacy are you going to leave? Does my legacy that I'm going to leave have eternal rewards that are beneficial to the kingdom of God? How are people going to recognize me when they're standing around my grave? What are they going to say about me? Is our legacy a legacy of sacrifice this morning? I can only answer that on my own. Every one of us will come to a crossroads where we're going to have to answer that question. Every one of us. Every one of us are going to stand before God. Whether you believe he's real or not, trust me, you're going to stand before God. And every one of us are going to give an account. Every one of us. Me, you, there's no exemptions in this. Every one of us, bro, are going to give an account of our actions, who we influenced, the legacy we left. Is the world that important to you? Are temporary things that important to you? We need to refocus. We need to reexamine what we're leaving for our children. Aren't your children important to you? Is the world important to you as far as salvation? Yes. Somebody prayed for you. That's why you're here. Somebody prayed for me. That's why I'm here. Somebody's going to stand before God and they're going to... God's going to say, what did you do? And I'm going to be standing next to them and you're going to be standing next to them and they're going to say, I prayed and this is the result. Sometimes legacies are not recognized by people, but they're always recognized by God. Sometimes your actions are not recognized by people, but they're always recognized by God. Don't do it for self-gratification, friend. Do it because you love people. And the only way you can love people, listen to me, is if you love yourself first. The only way you can love yourself first is God's inside of you, teaching you how. Let's stand. Why don't we lift our hands and thank him? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. God, I worship you. These altars are open. Please come and pray. I give my